In the last study of the day, we looked at how curcumin can be used to treat anxiety and depression. Today, we jump into some information that could change the life of anyone dealing with diabetes or anyone that's looking to prevent this fate. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ben and thanks for tuning in to today's study of the day. In this segment, I look at relevant, evidence-based literature that is one, interesting, that is two, mainstream media may not cover, and three, lastly and most importantly, has an action that you can incorporate into your daily lives. So I think if most people were asked, they, they've heard by now something about the benefits of fasting to the body. And it's my personal belief that at intermittent fasting can be one of the most powerful tools that one can incorporate into their lifestyle to ensure that their body is aging slowly and strongly. There's a lot of evidence supporting the use of intermittent fasting. It has been shown to slow the aging process, to lower blood pressure, to lower cholesterol, to benefit the skin, to boost the immune system, to boost memory through the, the increase of something called BDNF or brain-derived neurotropic factor. And for the first time in this study, it has been shown to help with diabetics. So here's what we know about diabetes. There is a type 1 diabetes, which is typically diagnosed early in life. This is the result of an immune reaction against the pancreas that prevents the secretion of insulin. And then there's type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is typically diagnosed later in life. It is primarily a lifestyle disorder, and it results from something called insulin resistance, or insulin insensitivity and all this means is that the pancreas is secreting insulin properly in most cases but the cells are insensitive to it the cells can't use it to take up glucose into the cell so typically speaking after we consume a meal sugar gets released into the blood then the pancreas starts to secrete insulin that takes the sugar from the blood and deposits it in the cell and this is now something that can be used for energy. The American Diabetes Association has noted between 2007 and 2012 a 41% increase in the number of cases of diabetes. And this is putting an enormous strain on the resources of the, the healthcare industry as well as the economy. And this trend is frightening because, like I said earlier, diabetes is primarily a lifestyle-based disorder. A poor diet, lack of exercise, increased stress levels, increased toxins in the environment, these are all things that are contributing to this frightening trend. And because diabetes is primarily a lifestyle-based disorder, a medication is rarely the solution. I want to share an example from my practice from this last month of a patient that came in that had fasting blood sugar levels of around 6.5. They went to see their family physician and the family physician said, you're pre-diabetic and I'm concerned, but it isn't until you reach seven, a fasting blood sugar of seven, that I'll, I'll actually prescribe a medication and we can get that under control. So what we're seeing is, is a really backwards attitude around the approach to diabetes because before we actually reach that that seven range there is already a pathology unfolding that needs to be addressed through lifestyle modification and waiting until this patient is in full-blown diabetes is missing an opportunity to start identifying the causative factors underlying this dig dysregulation in blood sugar so the hypothesis in this experiment was what do five days of calorie restriction followed by 25 days of regular eating over six cycles do to regenerate beta cells in the pancreas and reverse diabetes? So what the, what the experimenters did is they put mice on a diet that was calorie restricted for day one, day two, day three, day four, day five of a 30-day month and then they reintroduced re the regular consumption of calories from day six to day 30. And then they repeated this for six cycles. 
So the human equivalent to this calorie restriction in mice looked like this. It resembled a vegan diet with nuts and soups of around 800 to 1,000 calories over those five days, followed by regular calorie consumption over the 25 remaining days. So this is like the human form of a diet when people spend five days on a low calorie, low protein, low carbohydrate, but high on saturated fat diet. And what the researchers found were, was nothing short of a miracle. What they found after six cycles of calorie restriction followed by regular refeeding or feast and famine was that the beta cells in the pancreas started to regenerate. And this was found in both type 1 and type 2 mice. So this is the first time that dietary intervention has been found to stimulate beta cell production in type 1 diabetics. So what the researchers concluded is that by pushing the mice into an extreme state and then bringing them back, by starving them and then feeding them again, the cells in the pancreas are triggered to use some kind of developmental reprogramming that rebuilds the part of the organ that's no longer functioning. So what is the action based on this experiment? Well, what we know about type 2 diabetes is that it is primarily a lifestyle-based condition. And that means it is fully within our control to heal. And now we have one more tool to put in our tool belt to help reverse and cure this condition. Now, working with type 2 diabetes is a little bit simpler because it is primarily lifestyle-based than type 1 diabetes. Because type 1 diabetes is the result of an autoimmune condition, it can be a little bit more difficult to, to work with. But this is some science that's starting to show the role that diet can play in its reversal. Up to this point, the research has really focused for type 1 diabetics on stem cell research. But the difficulty with stem cell research is that they're finding that there's very poor conversion from stem cells into functioning pancre pancreas cells. And, and this is a huge limitation to, to that, that therapy. And so this is the first study that is showing how diet modification, specifically some short-term calorie restriction, can start to stimulate the body to, to heal the pancreas. So if you are diabetic, this is my advice. Try to replicate this experiment in your own life. Again, what this involves is one to four, one to five days of a dramatically restricted calorie consumption. On day one, you're looking for about 1,000 calories. On day two to four, you're looking to, for about 600 or 700 calories. And I will put a example of a 1,000 calorie day and a 700 calorie day at the bottom so you can use that as a, as a resource. So you're going to do that for four to five days and then you're going to take the, the remaining 25 days and eat your regular diet. So you, you probably will lose some weight in those first four days and then you'll regain it in the following 25. But then you'll repeat that cycle six times. First four days, calorie restriction. Next 25 days, regular consumption. First four days, calorie restriction. Next 25 days, regular consumption. So for the general population, my advice is to calorie restrict one time per week. Pick a Saturday or pick a Sunday and get your calories down to around 700 per day. And then two times per year, I recommend going through and try to replicate this study, but just for one cycle. So you would take four days, you would dramatically calorie restrict, and then you'd break. And six months later, another four days. And you can really do this as frequently or infrequently as you like. And based on the benefits and how your body reacts, you can make that, that decision for yourself. All right, so just to summarize, I really want to hammer home the point that, that diabetes does not have to be a lifelong condition. Um, I can't count the number of patients that I sit down across from and I feel the resignation from them. They believe wholeheartedly that they have no control over the outcome of this condition. And I, I, don't, and I want to say that there is nothing further from the truth. Diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is fully within our control to reverse. Type 1, like I said earlier, is a little bit more difficult because of that autoimmune piece. but this is the first bit of research that is pointing towards some real potential for, for both these, these groups of people. So now we have the science 
and we have the tools to make real impact when we're treating diabetes type 1 and type 2. So let go of the belief that you have no power over this diagnosis and, and step into the belief that it's fully within your control to change. Thanks everyone for listening. As always, I appreciate your time um, and joining me for the study of the day. Any questions or concerns, please leave them below and I will be sure to get back to you. Otherwise, take a moment to subscribe. If you haven't, we would love to have you a part of this health community. I will see you on the next study of the day.